Kevin and Norton equivalence is really, really interesting. And there's an amazing sort of things you can do in terms of reducing circuits this way. So what I want to do is I want to talk about three different versions of it, all three with no dependent sources, one of which one, two, and three. And what's going to be fun about this is that we'll try to work through not just solve like a value, but to realize that this is a one port network in itself. This is also one port network. This is also a one port network that can eventually become, in each of those cases, a single um, Thevenin equivalent circuit. You could also be an equivalent Norton equivalent circuit. Um, and you can transform back and forth. And so when you look at the first one, again, interesting thing when you start with, you've got two 5K ohm resistors in series. You realize that becomes a 10K ohm resistor. You might realize resistors in series work like that. Well, this one, you know, again, and I'm not going to need to do a whole lot of reductions here, but I want to just see what would this look like. And so I have that 10K parallel with another, with the 10K that was there. So I redraw this accordingly. I say I have two in parallel. So those two parallel ones become a 5K ohm resistor. Now those two become in series. So now I get a 10K ohm resistor. Great, right? So, and in fact, this is actually the Thevenin and Norton equivalent. And you say, well, wait, but where's the voltage source? The answer is there isn't one because it's zero. Um, there wasn't any um, independent source here, so we're not expecting any one over here either. Let's take a look at a different circuit where we can actually start to see how we use these transformations to help us. So if I've got these 20k ohm, this 20k, this is a, these two form a Thevenin circuit. I can transform it to a Norton circuit by having a current source and a resistor. Now the resistor stays the same. The resistor in any of these transformations does not change, which is great. But the nice thing then is that I get a current source, which is basically just going to be, what is that? Three volts divided by the 20 K ohm. So 0.15. Cool. So once I have this, I realize, wait a minute, I've got two parallel resistors. I probably kind of knew this was going to happen. <clears throat> but once you see it explicitly, like, oh, there's two K ohm resist 20 K ohm resistors. If they're in parallel, they become a 10 K ohm resistor. Well, wait a minute. I can take this 10 K ohm resistor with this current source and transform it back into a Thevenin equivalent. That Thevenin equivalent is a 10 K ohm sitting right here. And then it's 1.5 volts. Uh, which is basically this time, this value times the 10K. It's not surprising if you think about it, because I started off with two 20K ohm resistors and a three volt. That feels like, in a way, like a resistor divider. So, okay, I have a resistor divider, which means the three volts went to one and a half. Makes a lot of sense. So now I've got 10K and a 20K, again, because we redrew it, works really well. And I just add this up and I get 30K and 1.5 volts. Now I could have made a Norton equivalent out of this by simply taking the 1.5 volts and dividing by 20 by 30K. Gives you about 50, 50 microamps is what you're going to get for that. Well, let's take another one that looks a little more complicated and has some current sources in it. But still the same idea applies. Notice I've got two 40K ohm resistors here by actually doing the reverse of the 7 and Norton equivalent. I get the Thevenin and 40K and four volts. These two add in to give me an 80K. Well, I've got 80K and an 80K here. So, hmm, that gives me this circuit, right? 80K, 80K, and I still bring the current sources. Everything else just came along, no problem. And so once I've done that, I realize, wait, I need to do another Thevenin and Norton equivalent here, which gives me the two 80K in parallel. So this, I get this 5.5 and I get one going down in this direction. Current sources in parallel will add up with the sign of the currents. Now notice they're pointed in different directions. So that does mean it's going to be now 0.05 in the other direction, just doing a linear add of those, linear subtraction of these two. It's an add signed, but same thing, right? And so you get 40K here and 40k here with this current source. And you're like, well, how do I make that better? Well, why don't I do a, a Norton equivalent of this, which gives me now minus two volts again, because the current source going the other direction and the 40k. Add the two together and I get my resulting source. 
So there's a lot of times when you can really kind of work your way through this. And when you've actually got um, no dependent sources, these problems usually turn out to give you some very nice kind of um, sort of opportunities as you can work through all the very various components of the of the of the element.